So anyway, we now have a third person. Uh, hello. Hello, can you hear us? I hope the microphone is working. That's all. No, it's mute. It's a mute. Well, I was. I don't know if Harish will join. He usually joins a little later. Yeah. So anyway, if maybe he's not totally in front of the computer, maybe he just stepped out for a while. But anyway, if they do okay. want to join him, they're welcome. So for today, uh, what I was thinking is, we did yes. linear regression last time. Yeah. So if you are interested, we can look at another application like uh, basic k-means clustering or something like that. Because what we did was yeah. supervised learning. What we can try out is something of unsupervised learning. Now k-means clustering is probably not a very good example, but it's nice to start with. Because k-means clustering is lazy, which means you have to keep on computing every time, rather than you build a model and you compute. But it's a nice way to get started. So, yeah, and then probably we can go to something like the decision tree. Exactly, exactly. Like other recommender systems and all kinds of things. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, we, you want to look at some data sets? I mean, because we probably. No, we can continue with this PV for now because we've already done a lot oh, with it. So, we can, because, uh, like, just to know what is unsupervised learning, what we are trying to do, and what this entire thing is, we can just keep going with what we have. Okay. So, I'm just. Uh, just rerunning the code, uh, but mostly done. Yeah. So, uh, so how do you want to go about uh, using uh, this for? Uh, how do you say uh, for uh, what kind of? Uh, yeah, that's the thing. So we we'll, analysis you want to. Yeah, what I, I mean, like, uh, like what I said is, if you have an idea, we can always do so. But one simple way to get started with this is k-means cluster. K-means this. So it's called, uh, it's called KNN. That is yeah, K yeah. nearest nodes. So. Okay. Yeah, you can, I think you can. Yeah, just, uh, just quickly looking at it. Just I think that person dropped off because of bandwidth. I'm just switching off my video just in case you're grabbing too much bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah, I will also do that. Okay, so so um, what we can do is, um, yeah, so in this data set, uh, we have, uh, um, uh, just a second, we have, uh, uh, okay. Are you planning to share your screen or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, just sir. actually sorry. I'm I'm doing that. It's just I'm uh, getting stuck with uh, oh, okay. um, uh, with my uh, running the existing code because I because I shut down the because I, I don't keep it open for, for a week. Yeah. So I think uh, so the, the, there is the old error that was coming up. So you see that uh, this error. Uh, that we had could not convert string to float. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, done this uh, conversion, but I, I don't know which one I missed. Perhaps I'll run all of them. Uh, okay. I'll just run all of them. Restart and run all. Might take a while, but uh, at least uh, it'll go on correctly. Let's see. So, um, so we'll we'll just look at uh, what problem can we work on right now because yeah. the, this is the data that we have, mm -hmm. and um, uh, yeah. So first thing, I what I would do is I would say just uh, open a tab and just go mm -hmm. to uh, KNN in Scikit-Learn. And I think okay, the next yeah. one, yeah, should be second. K nearest neighbors. Yeah. So the idea behind this is basically it's like a kind of a clustering thing. 
so it's like this let's say we have data okay the data can be anything we have uh, like now for example if you go if you check out our latest pv data the last very last data set i don't know if it has run so far Hmm. Just a second, I think it should be done by now. No, not yet. Hmm. Okay, there is. Okay, yeah, so it's, uh, it's okay. It's here, so it should uh, it should be fine. Now I just have to do the regression. Okay, there is some problem with the data, and I don't know what is it. I think it's that uh, coefficient, because I see some strings. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, but we we did correct it, so I'm not really sure where this is going. I think it uh, the definition was below, and then we went up. Just check. Uh, okay. Let me just see. Uh, no, no, it's it's done separately. Maybe I did it. So this is the apply string to float. So this here. Oh, that didn't run. See, it's 53 still. That's why. So if you look right, that for some reason yeah. it didn't see this. Yeah, now this. Now if you type that again, uh, the next one line 54, because you see that the sequence is different. Now it's 64. So you see now all of them yeah. are float 64. So now it should be okay. Okay, let me just I think if it finds an error, it kind of breaks and doesn't continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what it, it was breaking at a point which which was clear, uh -huh. but that was not a. It was like y is equal to it was. Uh -huh. I think uh, there was something there, but uh, it should. This thing is this. Uh, mm, no, this error is still no, there. No, so, I think the error is different now. I think there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is essentially, you see that could not convert. Oh, no, I think through. you need to split your X train and X test again. I think you need to run that again. It's still taking the old X train and X test. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I, I see, I see. Mm. Yeah, you need to run that oh. thing again. See, it's ah, 46 yes, yes. for that. Ah, okay, now I see. Now I, I see. Yeah, exactly. We went back and forth somewhere and uh, I'll put it back here somewhere. So that it's not like I'll put it. Now it should up. Uh, okay. I think so, it's okay. I mean, we can just uh, take that uh, data set and just keep going because we don't really need the yeah, linear yeah. model anymore. Yeah, yeah. There's no point in spending time just on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, it's not working. So we'll figure it out later. You yeah, know, it's just some of the other things which have to be run in sequence. That's all. It's the, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you can just pick out that last data frame which had the PV and the weather. Uh, PV and weather. Okay. Um, it's the one, this one or the new one? I need to check. No, this so is this the, one contains. Uh, yeah, there was another one uh, where we. Uh, we dropped all of them. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, if we take this one, right? Now, here if you want, you can just quickly apply that SWD top to this. Just to, because I think if you do info here, you will see SWD top is probably, floats it, probably is this thing, or what do you call it? Uh, string. Or maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, just a second. Uh, okay. I know you need info. info. Yeah, no, okay, so they're all for there. So good. So very good. Okay. So now if you look at the data frame again, the head at least. Mm -hmm. So we have these data, right? Now we had classified in the case of linear regression, we had classified P V as the output and the remaining as the input. Right mm. now, this is a case of supervised supervised learning, which means that you have classified one variable as your output. You know this is the output, and you are saying that the other inputs are affecting in producing this output. So therefore, your intention is to produce 
a linear model like y is equal to mx plus c such that the output is related or rather the input produces such an output okay, according to a linear model. Now, supposing we do not have a clear distinction between input and output, so we just have data, right? And there is no way for you to know that one column in the data is an output and the others are inputs, right? So, in this is it now if you want to run a machine learning model on this, you can't do the usual linear model because you don't have an output. So now what do we do? One possible option is what is called as unsupervised learning, right? So this data can be just taken as data plots, right? So let it, for example, these are just data plots which are scattered all over the place. Now, if you go back to the K, KNN thing, the KNN tab. See here what happens is, here they talk about K nearest neighbors. So what happens is you are, let's say plotting this on n dimensions, right? Physically three, physically you can imagine three dimensions. So let's say we had only three columns. You could plot all those columns in a three dimension space, right? Now, supposing you were to cluster them, right? And determine according to these clusters who where it belongs to, right? So, for example, mm -hmm. let's say you have classified for some reason that there are, let's say, in this three-dimensional space, there are four different types. Let's say in PV itself, let's say we consider no output that is darkness, that is night. We consider, let's say, early morning or let's say twilight, which is early morning and late evening. We consider, let's say, a time of reasonable heat, let's say, what do you say, morning and maybe, let's say, late afternoon, and we consider a time of high heat, that is, like mid, like noon to, like noon to early afternoon, right? So, let's say we classify mm -hmm. our data into four types. So, in one type, you would see zero output, in the other, you would see low output, third, you would see some amount some output and the fourth is where you expect to see maximum output, right? Mm -hmm. So, we have classified our PV into these four types, right? Now, the question mm -hmm. is, you want to then say that if a particular, you suddenly put a plot on the data, let's say for example, how would you, this new plot, what would you categorize it as, right? So, this comes as K nearest neighbor. So, what happens is, you say, whoever is the largest majority of my nearest neighbor, I take that identity. Mm. That's all it does. Right? So, this okay. is a form of like unsupervised learning. So, basically what we say is, we just plot the data and then we say that this is probably who we are according to where we are at the closest. Yeah. I mean, the only, like I said, one bad thing about this is, that you are never creating a model. So, there is no model that you are creating and that you calculate the new point with respect to this model. Every time you take a new set, you have to run the entire thing again and try to find out who are the closest neighbors. So, this is like a lazy model. But it's fairly easy to understand. So, if you, I don't know if there is any theory down. If you look, if you scroll down and see, sometimes they have like a data point or something. No, nah, no, they don't. Anyway, so this is something we can do. So, if you come up, if you come up to the top, and you see here, see, it is as usual, it is a class that is K neighbors classified, is a class, and you have to, you have to instantiate it with something. So, the default you see N neighbors. These are the number of neighbors that you want to look for. So, the number of categories, right? So, in our case, you can start with anything, you can start with 2, 3, 4, you can leave it as a default 5. Mm -hmm. And then after that, there are several. So, like for example, there is weights which is uniform. Uniform is good, is to begin with. Distance is if you actually want to say that you are not just interested in who is my closest neighbor, but also want to give it a distance. So, if somebody is really close to you, you want to give that more importance. Somebody is a little far away from you, you want to give that little less importance, right? So, mm -hmm. this is one, but we don't have to, 
right the next is algorithm is auto that's also okay leaf size let's come down have a look so this leaf size is again i'm not sure what it is it's been a long time since i looked at it but again these are like kind of acceleration constants right so this one also mm -hmm. the p p factor and several others but one simple mm -hmm. way to get started is we do the same train test split right and we can use this train train test split along with the knn classifier mm -hmm. right so i don't know okay. do you have any thoughts on this no no so uh, it's, it's so so well, well one one thing is uh, what I, I i was just thinking that uh, even if uh, we don't know anything about the data this will be a good way to start Exactly. Don't know anything about the data, mm -hmm. and for instance, if I don't know uh, when does uh, PV go up or when does it not go up, I can just take the PV data and then run this, and then see uh, correlating it with uh, the index and see when does it go up and down. Something like basic uh, idea, and then maybe later we can say I'm interested only in the time when the data is being generated, when PV is being generated, and uh, Yeah, this this might be a good way to start when we don't know anything about the data. Just okay. put it through this, and then see what is happening as you change the nearest neighbors, number of uh, neighbors, and uh, perhaps at one some point we see that uh, okay, even if I increase the number of neighbors, uh, it's not really changing the changing the number of. Uh, I mean, it's not really changing the. Interest about the clusters, like whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. So maybe that that is what would be a good uh, way to start for uh, how to use or why to use this uh, for us. Right. Okay. So I would say in that case, let's uh, let's get started. So we just have to, as always, train test split. Yeah, but yeah, we'll also get the SK neighbors. Uh, so. Um, Uh, you might need to add some cells because we are running out. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, first you first it's always nice to do a train test split. Do you can do this? Ah, okay. Because first we split our data, then we apply this. So that's usually okay. Okay. Actually, so, you can copy that part again. I think. Yeah, yeah. So we, I think you can put it in a okay. function if you want. I'm But sorry. Actually, anyway, it's up to you. You can actually put this in a function. So you probably will have to do x train. You have to probably take in x train again because I think x train has some old values. So ah, define. Okay. Yeah. so you can go back and pull out those values because so x train is given only here yeah x and y that's all yeah basically you just need x and y sorry not x train y thing just x and y ah okay okay you mean x and y okay so Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, yeah. Just okay. Just one minute. If you go back to this thing, you should not need a Y. Just let me look at it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you don't need a Y for this. Right? You just uh, here. You you just so in the neighbors, neighbors, neighbors. What are the attributes? What are the uh, yeah, so the it. classifier? Would uh, I mean you do need an X and Y? So therefore, yeah, you are using a Y. But now the question is, we have a Y. Okay, let us uh, suppose. In that case, okay, now it's interesting. Yeah. So, like for example, we now have taken up. Can you? Uh, is that the only example that is there? Mm, let me see. Parameters um, fit x y. Yeah, right. I think so. Basically, no, here you see there is just fit samples. So fit samples. Okay. Oh. Uh, 
zero zero yeah i mean there, this one doesn't have any x and y i see so i think you know what is happening i think what is happening is you can categorize something you can sort of classify something as a category right so mm-hmm. what we need to do is we need to we okay. have pv I, as a so number there is, there is just a second just a okay. second so there is a, i think there is the difference is that here we have k neighbors classifier okay. and then here it is uh, downloading nearest neighbors so that is the difference because i think we were looking at something else before uh, and this one is something else so here it is nearest neighbors mm-hmm. and this is where you it is able to fit without any uh, um, any y see here i see so for instance in the in the that's why this example and v1 to some extent uh so in this example uh, you again see this mm-hmm. so you can see that there is no where because it is using nearest neighbors mm-hmm. it is not using uh, uh, k neighbors classifiers because in the previous one if i remember they yeah it one this one is k neighbors classifier mm-hmm. so uh, this appears to be different so in the nearest neighbors um, it appears that you give an x array sh- array like shape number of neighbors and that's why i think you also had so many parameters that you felt uh, doesn't make sense so i oh, know i mean they are sensible it's just that we don't really need to use it that much i think the difference between nearest neighbors and k nearest neighbors is that i think here from k nearest neighbors the fundamental concept is that you are always taking a vote as opposed to nearest neighbors where you can take a vote or you can use some other form of uh, geometric thing i think that's what is that okay. but okay. i remember now what you see basically you are in any machine learning thing you are always looking trying to predict some kind of an outcome so in our case if we don't want to actually map what we were doing with linear modeling linear regression is we were trying to actually calculate or predict what is the value of our pv with respect to our weather conditions right now instead of doing that what we usually do is in, K, in such kind of classifying problem we classify according to a certain outcome so like for example you can classify a student whether he will pass or fail right so depending mm-hmm. on several criterion let's say attendance and uh, you know ask class and assignments and things like that whether a person will pass the course so you can have a pass fail on several cases and then predict based on other data like the attendance in classes how much he got in quizzes how much he got in midterms and things like that what is the probability of a student passing according to kenius names so you are predicting an outcome it is just not you are not actually predicting a number but you are predicting a classification so you are saying that this data with this new data belongs to so and so classification so for example in our case what that means is we have to take our pv num pv data and classify it into four different categories if let's say we want to do so so let's say for example if we take that pv if you just look at only the pv column yeah 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 i'm just doing it here yeah. I would see unique but yeah. not unique uh, is there actually you can do yeah you can do max and min what max max down okay yeah oops no right so is, is, it, is it a you have to right? yeah method okay yeah and you can do min min should be zero unless there is a negative for some reason yeah min should be zero yeah yeah, yeah. it is zero okay so this is this is a range 0 to 104 so quite obviously we yeah. can just divide them into like take a divide by 4 yeah now maybe what no one just a second uh, i'm just seeing uh, no. there is with floating point data is usually i uh, usually it's useless to look at unique and floating point no, data no, no. Yeah. i mean why why i do this i'm just doing it is that uh, i want to just plot this uh-huh. so because the unique uh, i mean why i plot this is because if if it is no you, you will see it should be range maybe can we arrange unique 
uh, you know, sort it. Yeah, I guess you could sort it. I think because dot I, I sort should be there. Sorry? Dot sort, sort should be there. Oh no, you have to do the, okay, you want to do it before. No, I'm just trying to see how many are there. So there is, of course, there will be a lot, but once I st sort it, and then um, we can probably find the same median, mean, and all that. Also. So, ah, okay. uh, but I will just plot this because I, I would want to see, uh, yeah, you see that uh, it's fairly continuous between zero and that right. and, um, 10, something like that. It is not, uh, yeah. there's not much discontinuity. And, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, maybe we can just see what is, for instance, uh, median. Median is there. Uh, is it an NP? NP, NP, probably, yeah. So it is 38. It's 40. So, yeah, it's more or less, uh, fine. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So we can now say, for instance, we can classify, uh, or can we see how many occurrences happen about? Can you give me just one happened? minute? We have a new joinee. Hello. Oh, okay. Hello. Can you hear us? Well, okay. I guess we continue unless the person comes back on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so I'm, I'm just quickly trying to see if uh, if we can like my uh, if we can see uh, um, uh, is it possible right now to do uh, uh, um, okay okay leave it and I think I'm just going to answer. so my idea is we can quickly do a categorization exactly of yeah just so, divide by four so then we have like if you do, if you do a divide by four, then we just create like a list of four. Yeah. So, so just a point question. Mm -hmm. How many, if you want to check how many, uh, times a number occurs, mm -hmm. how do you do that? N unique. Ah, yeah, N unique. Okay. So I can, can I specify it as a number? Uh, no, oh, no, no, no. Uh, that is not possible. Okay. You want to see how many times the number occurs. See, then what actually yeah, you have to do is you have to do like a find, find no, count. I see, okay. Okay, fine. So, I don't I, know if any unique, does it take an argument just to a shift tab? No, no. That's no, the no. thing because it probably doesn't take an argument, so it throws it away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I just gave a random answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so n unique, uh, but but I want to see, okay, as you said, like because I want to see, for instance, zero can be a special category instead of uh, us saying that you know, uh, because zero could be so many numbers mm -hmm. that uh, we probably have to give it a category for zero, and then the rest we'll have to separate. Them and separate them. Yeah, you can do that, no problem. So yeah, yeah so, so we can do yeah like so, complete zero. We can do low. Medium and high. Yeah. Okay. So we we'll have to do something like the, what we did before for uh, something like this, perhaps. Oh yeah. Actually, it's like this. Uh, once again, like for example, if uh, no, no. when we talk about zero, can you just mm -hmm. do like a query? So like df of pv df. I mean, of course, like uh, query when pv is equal to zero. So basically, df pv is equal to zero. And cast mm -hmm. that to DF P. And yeah. Like this? Yeah. Uh, you have to put a square bracket. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we have 895 rows. So that's pretty good. So, this is one category that you can do completely. So, for example, what you can see is you can create another column and here we can do that apply function. So, for example, we can say, uh, you can create, you can start writing the function, maybe def, whatever. How do you want to say, uh, separate PV? I don't know. How. Uh, PV categorization. PV categorization, that's it. 
So, first is you have to just say that if x is equal to 0, we give it a category of let us say 0. You have to equal to and then you can just say return 0 maybe. Return 0, yeah, okay. And then, and then uh, actually what you can do, maybe just above the if, you can create like, uh, oh, maybe you can just do, yeah, this is also easy, elif. So basically if x is, I think the remaining you have three categories, right? So, so you just have to say, Ah, now here there is one problem that I see. You know the problem. The problem is we need the min and the we need the max. Yeah. So how do we get the max? Why do you need the min and max? No, because how? Because you have to compare it with. Uh, you want to hard code it. No. Okay. So what we can do is we can take it as a one of the parameters. Uh, see, that's the thing. We're applying, right? When you apply, you are applying uh, okay, it yes. on this. So, I'm just thinking. If I apply, I think we'll have to try yeah, it out. Won't be able to. Uh, try this out. Try to say that, uh, try to define a method or try to define one above. Just say that, uh, let's say max is equal to x dot max. So, and this is within the function. This has to be within the function. Because it okay. might be possible that even though it iterates, it does give you this thing. Actually, max might be a reserved keyword. I think it's been highlighted. So you can say x max maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you need max. Uh, it's not max value. Just max is a method. Like this? Yeah. Again, I'm not okay. sure. If it doesn't work, we'll do try to find a workaround. Yeah, 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 yeah. A min is zero, we know, so it's okay. Yeah, min well is equal to zero. Okay, we already have it. Yeah. But anyway, I'll Okay, you can try that. So it's between basically it is between zero and max by three. Basically it's zero okay. is one category and the remaining three are other categories. So it's basically one by third. The first so, third, yeah, the second okay. third, and the last third. So, okay, okay. So, yeah. Uh, three dot Yeah, that doesn't matter because it's any float value, so it would. So now let's see if this works. So if you can no. just, you have to execute it. Okay. I don't see a number. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, Shiva, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Hi. Just a second. Huh? Can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you. Yeah. Ah, okay. But can you I hear me? I can hear you, so there's some problem. Uh, okay. So there's some problem with the... Uh, okay. So if you can hear me, uh, just... Uh, Check what is happening because I think I pressed something and that's when it happened. Pressed. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Now? Is it better now? No. 
Okay. Um, what do we do now? Okay. Okay, I'll just join okay. again. Makes sense. Uh, I will also do that once you join. I will also do half student. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. so there must have been some glitch. Anyway. Okay. Okay. So okay. let's get back. Is, is, is this fine? Yeah, now it should be okay. So, yeah, we just uh, try to run this, see if it works. Because as I said, I yeah. do not know if that max will work on this. Yeah, yeah, we just check. So, anyway, you are applying to everything when it might be just... Exactly. So, apply and then... Okay. It is supposedly going. So Interesting. No. No. Oh. Okay. Let's see what it says. Float object has no attributes. Ah, so okay. So, so it's, it's not flow. able to. It's not able to. Okay. So we we'll, we we'll, we we'll, what we can just uh, put a. So then number. what we have to actually do is we need a slightly uh, first what we'll have to do is first then in that case. Can we, okay, so I don't really like to do this, but can you define maxval and milval outside the function? For now, let's try to just hack into it. So basically, that okay. maxval and minval, uh, you just put it okay. above the function, but yeah. it's just not x dot max instead, but it is df whether max. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. Essentially, making some form of a global variable. Exactly. Not a very nice thing to do, but... At this moment, this is a quick hack. Yeah, because you would like to do that KNN rather than just hang around with this. Uh, no. Max, is, is this... I don't know is what Max... Like I don't know what Max... max? Um, it's, just, it's just Max. Max actually works on that. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, Max, it's oh, a, it's okay. a method. It's a it's a method, so you have to call it. And you'll have to okay. delete the ones or comment it, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, so execute it again. Okay, yeah. it works. Not a nice thing, but it's okay. It's a hack. Okay. So yeah. now, if you look at, uh, if you you will have to create a new column. Yeah. So basically, yeah. Uh, cat maybe or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I need to create a few more at all. Okay. Great. So now if you just do a unique on PV cat, that column, just to make sure that we do have 0, 1, 2, 3. Great. Yeah. So we do have it. So that's okay. So now we have categorized our PV data according to this. What we will do is we will use this column that is PV cat instead of the actual PV. Right? Yeah. And our idea is that with some weather data, we want to categorize according to this weather what happens to our PV. Mm -hmm. So like for example, if it's dark, is the PV zero? If it is so much sun, so much this you should be okay, you know, can it categorize the PV. So, what you have to do is, you have to again just take that X and Y. Only thing here, you have to choose your X to be, uh, your Y to be PV cat. 
I think that you can copy it from before we have all that, right? Yeah. Cause I don't know if you can copy no, multiple, no. just try. I don't know, I'll try. I just tried it. No. Oh. Anyway, that's okay. So, y is equal to, you know, this is good. You can just uh, copy this next one to this. So, basically, it's pv cat. It's not, do we have to do two numpy? Uh, yeah, always yeah. better. But the only thing is pv cat. It's not pv, pv yeah. cat. Yeah. And y, you can just do that. Uh, x, sorry, you can just do a copy. You can just do uh, this thing. And no, uh, yeah, no, you can do a drop on that because anyway, it, you, like you said, it returns the new one. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, again, I think you have to say columns is equal to. Uh, PV. PV, PV and, and PV. PV. Yeah, both of them. Right. So just do yeah, a numpy. X is equal to x two numpy. Uh, for this, you have to do two numpy. Yeah, yeah, always because it is actually that by default takes a numpy array. Yeah. Okay. So they want this one exists. Oh. Yeah, okay. this That's won't happen. Good. That's okay. That's good. So now that we have this, you can just do x train train test split. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, better to copy because again. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. this. And uh, you might have to import it again. Uh, no, no, it's there. Okay. Ah, great. Yeah. Great. So now we can just uh, create, you can, you can import the k nearest neighbors. Yes, I can do this again. Uh, I think this one is neighbors. This is not the one we are looking for. This is, this is what we are looking for. Nearest neighbors. Oh, I see. What is that? So, for, I'll show you this. So, this, there are two of these. Oh, no, no, I would say k nearest neighbor classifier is better one rather than neighbors. I don't know what neighbors okay. does, yeah. No, in, in a sense, uh, the neighbors are the ones you take only one uh, sample and then it, I think it does it on its own. It just classifies the data into a different category. But anyway, that's not uh, yeah. important. Yeah. I mean, I've never so, used it. I've usually used K and N. That's why I said it's okay. okay. Now, I think typically what we can do, for instance, if I take this PV weather data mm -hmm. uh, and then run it through K nearest neighbors mm -hmm. and then say that uh, uh, classify it into five to four different categories, mm -hmm. it should probably do what we have done. Then, you know, with our AFL statement. Right. Perhaps. So, anyway, we'll see that. Let me just add a few more. Okay. Okay. So first is you have to create like an object. So just you can say pvknn is equal to. So uh, k nearest neighbors. It's that is a bit of a. And here you have to just look at your data. But I think the first argument. Uh, let me help. Yeah. So, it is n neighbors is equal to, in our case, it is 4. Yeah, we have to change that. Yeah, so, can just write n neighbors. Four. Four. The rest is all Eight default. Eights. I think the rest can all be different because we are not doing a weighting. The algorithm can be auto. We are not doing, we, you can play around with those other algorithms, but I don't know that much about the algorithms. Mm -hmm. So, this is good enough. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So it has done something. So now what we have to do is we have to now fit it. Yeah. So I think it's again I think it should be usual standard X test Y test. Yeah. Yeah, X and Y. Yeah. X test. It's a X train, sorry, X train, Y train. Okay, there's something wrong. Oh, yes. again. Why? I thought we kind of... If you just look... I think this, 
this problem is there somewhere uh, with the explain and I'm not sure where it is. See, you still have this, yes. So we probably have to run that code again. Yeah, it's just a pain to do it again. I don't know why. This is the one. Yeah. I mean, even though it's not showing it, it's just a funny thing. I'm not For sure. Instance, I think it is, you know what is happening. I think we have created a copy somewhere, but it is looking at an old reference value. Mm. Something of that sort is happening. I think because yeah, we've just I, created. I'm trying to clean this up next time before the next session. Ah, that's okay. Uh, we can just yeah, just quickly run this thing. Yeah. So I we I will just do um. This has to be done on this, right? Yeah. No oh, X. I will do it on. Uh, right. No, 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 yeah, yeah, there's a problem, I, I figured, like, because this is capital X. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, you Just renamed it, okay, okay. Yeah, but even if there is a mistake now, at least we we kind of know what is happening. Ah, no, uh, it okay. doesn't happen. Yeah, now it should not be a problem. Okay, so fitting has, did you do a fit? No, and the fit is okay. That's right. Okay. No. So I will just do a fit now. Uh, just look at the method. Oh, yeah, here we can. X train, comma y train. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now what we can do is you can put the uh, predict. So y predict is equal to x test. Basically, you take x test and this would be is equal to y predict. So, y predict is equal to this thing. Okay. Yeah. Oops. So, oops, I know. Yeah. Okay. So, now we can so just we plot can. these two. Categorization, we probably should do a different kind of plot. Yeah. Can I do a scatter perhaps? Yeah, you can try that. What else can we do? Actually, first one will also have to be both will have oh, okay. to And scatter is usually x comma y, so I think I'm not sure. Scatter is ah, a different okay. kind of plot. But anyway, try it out and just see. Because it requires oh, actually. It's already saying that. It's it's showing the same problem. Yeah. So scatter. Uh, I mean, what I want is. Uh, yeah, I see. I see this. Actually, okay. Let me see. We what we want. We can we can just create a, a dummy variable, right? Uh, X something like uh, some X dummy is equal to one is to length of. Uh, Y test, for instance. Oh, ah, yeah, sure. Ah, I just, why, yeah, I'm just trying, yeah. Oh, what? sorry, sorry, sorry. Range. Yeah, God. yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Range is uh, plus one, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, okay. Now, so if if technically if it is um, if it's overlap, we should not see blues a lot, right? That's yeah, the idea. that's the idea. So now, if you actually have a look, you see here. You see what the thing is. There is, if you look at the first bottom line and the first two lines, right? Mm -hmm. You see that it's fairly good overlap. 
right so it appears like actually can you zoom in between let's say a dense area let's say between uh, what would you say 150 and 200 so if you do an x limb no actually you have to do an x limb separately so it will be plt dot x limb You can put it as a list of 150, 200. Okay, great. So now you see that there is this uh, this thing. So now, so, so for instance, here if you look at this part, yeah, that you see that where you see two different at the same vertical thing, that is an error. So you see, right, at the yeah, first, yeah, of course, of that course. is another. Yes. Where you don't see anything, that's an overlap. Yeah. Right. For, the, for instance, this is an overlap. Yeah. This is not an overlap. This These three are overlaps. Yeah. So, if you look at the way it has categorized, right, it seems to have Can done... just take a difference of these two because anyway they are predicting... Uh, um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because if there is a difference, we should immediately see. Otherwise, we... It's zero. Okay. Yeah, you, can, you don't have to even limit it to this. Right. So, yeah, you can see that... Uh, so, the main thing what this shows is that the density of that zero line shows that it's pretty okay. Hmm, yeah. And the fact that it has got those, the outliers are pretty bad, like pretty low. For example, if you look, there is a significant amount of error in the one line, right? Mm -hmm. So, which means there are cases where it has kind of missed the category. So, it is like 0 to 1 or 1 to 2 and things like that, where there is, it's a boundary, right? That's what it means. And yeah. as you go on, the error has actually decreased. So, which means the chances of it getting it totally wrong, that is getting a zero as high, are pretty low. But though it has gotten right, that it has happened at some point in time. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, it has yeah, actually yeah. got a complete darkness thing as bright sunshine. I don't know how it managed to do that. And vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it is possible to do with... Uh, with uh, I mean, I don't think there is a there was a solar eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the solar eclipse. Uh, yeah, I'm also pretty sure <laughs> because that's essentially what it means. Because it's like the temperature is still high, everything is high, but it's just zero. But again, it could also be potential. These are see what this shows is you can actually if you investigate those points. You can actually find out if the PV was indeed zero at that point, or rather there is some kind of other thing like it could have been a clouding effect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how? Okay. Yeah. So, what do we do for that? I guess this. I mean, like I said, this is like shows further studies. Uh, this is something. But what this shows is this kind of categorization is actually could be said to be a little more accurate than what we got as a linear model. Like linear model is a pretty tough thing to do. Mm. Whereas this categorization is like, okay, at least I'm not trying to exactly predict it, but I'm looking for some kind of range where I can put this into. Yeah. So it's better uh, to use categorization uh, when we don't know much and we are not, we are kind of uh, uh, at loss to choose which model it is and don't go to linear model, but rather go to category. Uh, also, there are some cases where it is based on outcome, like pass fail, right? Or a person, whether you want to know whether a bank wants to know whether a particular customer will default on a loan, right? Or uh, you want to know whether a particular investment will like yield well or not. No, like it's just a yes or no. So in that case, when or or let's say a few categories, let's say you no, know, like maybe yes, no, or let's say okay, medium. So, in that case, in such cases, this kind of thing is pretty good because you can classify it as distinct category. Mm. Though we actually created a classifier when there was none, but this is a case where you can kind of go both ways. You, know, you can take quantitative data and you can make it categorical or you can do the other way also. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I just thought this would be interesting to look at this, uh, this one different case. Mm, yeah, that's good. That's good. We have at least seen uh, a good idea of how to uh, 
how to use the same thing for different models yeah so i think i don't know if we can continue to do other things with this but i don't know if you want to take yeah, a look I mean, at I an think one, we, we should look at uh, some other data because ah, uh, that's what i was thinking because this one this data is uh, is quite limited that is true. Uh, that is true because we have just 2000 points now how much can you do with that anyway? yeah 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 i mean i would say if we want to do some models we can even go back to that hotel uh, booking model we can create a, a kind of uh, uh no recommender system or something like that uh, where people would uh, say okay i want to go at this time what do i do yeah so, something like that. that is that is quite possible and uh, or i will see if uh, if there is any other uh, mechanisms that we can use uh, to 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 see if uh, if we can do some i mean the same approach like you said we can go for doing continue to do some other cl- higher classification like uh, um, decision trees and random forests and all but uh, i mean i don't know anything about them but uh, i know the names but um, we can use them to on data which is more amenable to that because i think there are a lot of people uh, people who have used random forest for almost everything in car Oh, I see. Everything. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I I think was, I think uh, Jeremy Howard said that uh, you just take a random forest and feed it uh, any data, it will give you uh, better than average results. <laughs> like better than average, whatever else people are trying uh, would be worse. Uh, okay. You can probably get get more than ninety percent of. Uh, I mean, I mean, about ninety percent of the people. you just find the random ones yeah i guess we could look at it either way yeah yeah we will we, we'll see some other data set also i'll also have a look at it mm-hmm. if there is any other data set that is that might be used okay sure okay okay then great okay i guess we are almost away out of time anyway so yeah, yeah so okay then see you next week yes so sure, um, then next Yeah. Uh next yeah. week is there anything? No, yeah, no, no nothing. nothing. No nothing. Okay. See you then. Okay. See you.